Hey all, Joe here with All Funnies and Games, and today I'm going to be sharing a drawing video with y'all. Just kind of a concept with, based on a conversation I've had at work. I think we've all had this conversation, if you're a fan of the Harry Potter series, we just start off, what house would all of us be in? And from there it just kind of turns into, okay, what house would all of our co-workers be in? All of that. And Eventually, of course, that conversation will always bring up, well, Slytherin isn't exactly just an evil house by default. Slytherin's a lot more nuanced than that. It's about cunning and ambition, and for sure those are easily villainous traits. Definitely good shorthand to make a very quickly understood villain, but... There, there can be Slytherin heroes, there don't have to all be Slytherin villains, and yeah, usually we're saying it just to kind of pacify somebody who got set, told, hey, you seem like a Slytherin, but it got me thinking, what if there were other houses that had the main villain of the series? And, you know, I'm not going to do this as just like, well, what if Voldemort was a different house? This is a completely different villain. And it's just, what would a Ravenclaw look like as a villain? So looking at this, Ravenclaw is not going to be as much about, like, power for power's sake. Um, it's not going to be as much about a willingness to go into old tomes, though there is some of that. I think more than the old tomes, though, there's going to be a willingness to experiment. And a willingness to invent and innovate. Uh, even beyond what a Slytherin would. And we definitely see a lot of inventiveness among Slytherin in the series, but I think a Ravenclaw, properly motivated, could go even a step further. So, basically, this guy is going to be more of your classic mad scientist type of villain. Just horrifying experiments that surpass the bounds of good taste. Not exactly immoral in the way that your classic villain is, but much more amoral. You know, for the sake of knowledge, for the sake of pursuing the sum of human knowledge, sacrifices are acceptable to a villain like this. This is going to be someone who is less inclined to claim that they're doing this for personal power and a belief that you know, their own political power is for the best. You know, with a Slytherin, you're going to see someone who's more, you know, when I rule, I will be able to make things better. This is more a villain who knows how things could be made better, and all we need is the proper research done. This is the kind of villain who would very easily say things like, those fools at the university, or those fools at Hogwarts, as the case may be in our little AU we're constructing here, but... Definitely a villain who falls a little bit further from that classic muahaha and a little bit more towards the calm, quiet. Yes, let's see what we'll do here. So let's colorize this real quick and we'll get a look at sort of a final version of this guy as we take a look here. And fully colored, he's in the Ravenclaw colors blue vest, blue robe, uh, black under robe, silver buttons. It's got that very Ravenclaw feel to it. Blood on his hands, blood on his sleeves. He's waded through blood. He's worked with blood. He's got some splatter. And really with this guy, we see someone who will get his hands dirty. He will perform those dark experiments and he's not interested in horcruxes. He's going to make something new and reinvent that villainy in the pursuit of what can be done with magical research, what can be done down those new unexplored avenues of scholastic pursuit. And that's the villain we see here, and that's the kind of villain that I think Ravenclaw would be most likely to produce. That's why I'm calling him the Butcher of Ravenclaw. That's where he is, that's how he fits. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you on the next one.